Welcome back to Fallout 4. It's time to finally, actually, seriously, go to Diamond City. We are actually going to continue on the main quest after completely ignoring it for like 20 hours. It's actually going to happen. Assuming I don't find like 50 places to explore before I get there. I hear people. Oh, it's friendly. Who are you people? Diamond City Security. Ah. Oh. Diamond City is like... A little... City within a city, it seems like. Protected by the wall, purified water. Looks like it's a fortress, basically. Here's the entrance. So you get one of those fancy vault suits. Those one size fit all? Excuse me. Nothing to see here. What do you mean you can't open the gate? Stop playing around, Danny. I'm standing out in the open here for crying out loud. I got orders not to let you in, Miss Piper. I'm sorry. I'm just doing my job. Ooh, just doing your job. Protecting Diamond City means keeping me out, is that it? <laughs> oh, look, it's the scary reporter. <gasps> I'm sorry, but Mayor McDonough's really steamed, Piper. Saying that article you wrote was all lies. The whole city's in a tizzy. You open this gate right now, Danny Sullivan. I live here. You can't just lock me out. <sighs> you. You want into Diamond City, right? I'm really impressed with the animations that she just had there for that whole encounter. This game doesn't exactly have good animations in general, and I, I was really impressed with those. They actually... My god. Bethesda... I just realized what Bethesda just did. This is groundbreaking for Bethesda. Mine's Bethesda just had a character express themselves. Come on, that's surprising, right? This is really groundbreaking stuff. I didn't know Bethesda was even capable of making characters express any emotions whatsoever. But they did it. I just got here, but yeah... Shh. Play along. What? What's that? You said you're a trader up from Quincy? You have enough supplies to keep the general store stocked for a whole month? <laughs> you hear that, Danny? You gonna open the gate and let us in, or are you gonna be the one talking to crazy Myrna about losing out on all the supply? Jeez, all right. Don't need to make it personal, Piper. Give me a minute. Better head inside quick before old Danny catches on to the bluff. This place, Diamond City. What is it? Oh, the green jewel? She's a sight. Everyone who's anyone in the Commonwealth is from here, settled here, <laughs> got kicked out of here. A big wall? Some power, working plumbing, schools, and some security goons are what make Diamond City the big monster it is. <laughs> oh, love it or hate it. You'll see for yourself soon enough. Let's go. I really like her voice actor. She's doing an awesome job. Piper, who let you back inside? I told Sullivan to keep that gate shut. You devious, rabble-rousing slanderer. The level of dishonesty in that paper of yours. I'll have that Ooh, printer that scrapped for parts. Mr. Tyrant Mayor shuts down the press. Why don't we ask the newcomer? You support the news? Because the mayor's threatened to throw free speech in the dumpster. I don't really know what's going on. What newspaper are you talking about? Mine. Public occurrences. And we're the hard look at the truth. 
So are you with us or not? What? With you? I'm... <laughs> I like freedom with the press, of course, but... I mean, I don't know. For all I know, what he's saying is true, and you are a... Someone who's just... Making up lies to sell papers. Always believed in freedom of the press. Oh, I didn't mean to bring you into this argument, miss. No, no, no. You look like Diamond City material. Welcome to the great green jewel of the Commonwealth. Safe, happy, a fine place to come. Spend your money, settle down. Don't let this muckraker here tell you otherwise, all right? What are you two arguing about anyway? What do you think? Print lies and everybody's happy, but if you print the truth... <laughs> <coughs> now, was there anything particular you came to our city for? I'm trying to find someone. Trying to find someone? Who? Who would I talk to about finding a missing person? Well, whatever you do, don't bother going to Diamond City Security for help. Uh, don't listen to her. Well, I'm afraid that our security team can't follow every case that comes through. I'm confident that you can find help here. Diamond City has every conceivable service known to man. One of our great citizens can surely find the time to help you. See if we can get a persuasion check here. See if we can pass it. A mayor of a great city must know everyone. Who can help me? Oh, I'm sorry, I don't nope. have time for any more questions. I'm a busy man. Enjoy your stay in our fair city. <sighs> this is ridiculous. I want the truth, McDonough. What's the real reason security always shrivels away when talk of missing persons I've had enough up? of this, Piper. From now on, consider you and that little sister of yours on notice. Yeah, keep talking, McDonough. That's all you're good for. Right. <laughs> Mmm, a big Diamond City welcome from the mayor. You feel honored yet? Look, I gotta go get settled in, but, um, stop by my office later. I have an idea for an article you'd be perfect for. Piper made it sound like anytime missing per persons are brought up with security in Diamond City, they shy away from examining it further. It sounds like there's a kidnapping problem or something in Diamond City. Something that they're turning their eyes away from. So, you're that traitor Piper was talking about. Something tells me she's pulled the wool over my eyes again. Am I right? Uh, no. I've got a whole supply train I wasn't lying. coming in. I got a whole supply train coming in tomorrow. Oh, of course you do. <laughs> God, I failed. Now tell me the one about you and the fish that got away. Hey, what's brought you into town anyway? Be good to note it down in the logs. Hmm. Well, if they shy away from investigating missing persons, then... I kind of don't want them to know what I'm up to. I mean, obviously the mayor already knows that I'm looking for a missing person, but still. You know... You gotta speak up. Deaf in one ear. If they get the feeling that I'm getting close to finding out whatever they're trying to cover up, probably bad stuff is gonna happen. Just looking for something. Aren't we all? Now, was there anything particular you were looking for? Hmm. Not really your business. All right. Sorry I asked. You're Sullivan, right? Hey, did I ever get the reason why you came to Diamond City? I need to write something for the logs. He's really insistent about putting something down. What's your take on Diamond City? It's safe is what it is. Diamond City's got the best security anywhere. Like to think I have a hand in that. But I was asking about you. Come on. Just need to jot the reason you're here down in the logs. No. Nope. Not gonna do it. Too bad. 
Hey. Also, for being some of the best security forces around, that l that crappy little like unmodified pipe rifle he's got is really sad. Hey, did I ever get the? Re Like a microcosm. Hey, kiddo. How are the paper sales? Well, the presses are getting overloaded. That motor is going to go soon if we don't replace it. Uh, you've been saying that for weeks, and the old girl still keeps cranking. Stop worrying so much. I gotta head into the office. You start whistling if you see any angry politicians coming our way. Why? Is something wrong? Piper. <laughs> that was awkward. Is the Institute spying on your home? Read the public to find out. Piper was supposed to just walk away, but then she ended up getting stopped by dog meat. So Read paper to newcomers. If the Institute grabs you in the night, at least we warned you. So she must be Piper's... What did the mayor call her? Like her younger sister, I think. The Institute? You ain't heard of the Institute lady? They snatch people up in the night and no one hears from them again. It's all in the paper. Better read up before they grab you, too. Who's gone missing? Drifters, residents, stadium seat snobs. Seems every year or so, someone's gone. And we all know why. So you better be careful, newcomer. The Institute is out there. And they'll grab you, too. Like I said, it's all in the paper. If that's true and it's actually the Institute, why would the mayor want to cover that up? Did they have a deal with the Institute? I believe you. Thanks. You are a real lost lamb in the wolf's den, lady. So what are you doing in Diamond City anyway? I wouldn't mind telling her what I'm actually here for. Just hoping to find something here. Yeah, you and every scaver in the Commonwealth. So what are you looking for, huh? I'm looking for my baby. His name's Sean. You have a son, lady? Wow, you're old. Mm, you're in bad luck. No one tries to find missing people in Diamond City. Missing people means the Institute is involved. And no one's going to want to get the Institute's attention. You're a smart kid. Isn't there someone in town who isn't afraid of this institute? Well, there is the detective, Mr. Nick Valentine. He's not afraid of anything. If anyone's going to help you, it's him. If his business card isn't shaped like a heart, I'm going to be disappointed. Yeah, I'm definitely sending you to the right place. Good luck, lady. All right, the synthetic truth. I want to read that. Public occurrences. October 20, 2287. Synthetic truth by Piper Wright. Noodles. We all eat them. We all love them. And Diamond City's power noodles have supplied this sustenance for the past 15 years. From the stilted mechanical cadence of Takashi's program Japanese, to the fragrant steam that wafts from each bowl, to the scalding tang of each delicious mouthful, the ordering and eating of noodles is but one of many shared human experiences. Or is it? I was struck by this very question as I sat at the counter of power noodles last Wednesday night just after 5 p.m., enjoying a dinner I had so many times before. That's when I noticed our very own Mayor McDonough sidle up to a stool and engage in the very same ritual. 
Right hand extending, mouth opening, teeth chewing, yes, eating noodles. The shared experience of almost every Diamond City resident. So it must have also seemed to the residents of Diamond City, nearly 60 years ago, on an uncharacteristically warm May evening in 2229, as they sat around this very same counter. But that was before the days of Takashi and his noodles, when the bar served not noodles, but ice-cold Nuka-Colas, frothy beers, and stiff shots of whiskey. The barman's name was Henry, and that night, he facilitated the shared human experiences of drinking, smoking, talking, and laughing. That is, until tragedy struck. There aren't many among us who are even old enough to remember that evening although some of the city's ghoul residents certainly could have, had they not been forcibly removed thanks to Mayor McDonough's anti-ghoul decree of 2282. But there is one person among us who does remember, distinctly, the events of that evening. Respected matriarch Eustace Hawthorne, who recounted her story in a public occurrences exclusive interview. Oh, I was there all right. Sitting right at the bar, sure as you're sitting in front of me now, 22 years old or so, and just looking to have a good time. I was safe behind the wall. We all were. So what was the harm? And let me tell you, that Mr. Carter made it easy. He came into town earlier that day, said he was from out west somewhere. It didn't really matter. What did matter was his smile and his laugh, and the way he'd make everyone feel at ease. That night, at the bar, we all just sort of crowded around him. Everyone wanted to exchange a word or hear about the state of the Commonwealth. And Mr. Carter, he was all too happy to oblige. It was just so wonderful. Until it wasn't. Eustace continued her account of that evening, and the moment when things turned sinister and the truth about Mr. Carter was revealed. We'd been drinking and carrying on, must have been three hours. Mr. Carter had four or five drinks in that time. He seemed a bit drunk, I guess, like the rest of us. Then something just sort of happened. He was smiling, but the smile sort of went from his face, all in an instant. And then his cheek started twitching, kind of funny. And I remember watching him, clear as if it happened just yesterday. He reached inside his coat, took out a revolver, and then blam. He shot Henry, the barman, right in the head. Didn't hesitate, didn't show any emotion. Mr. Carter killed Henry as casually as if he were paying him for a drink. But his cheek never did stop twitching. Let me tell you, all hell broke loose after that. What Eustace is describing is, of course, is the famous event known as the Broken Mask. When the people of the Commonwealth learned for the first time that the Institute, the shadowy scientific organization responsible for the creation of combat androids, had actually succeeded in creating a model so advanced it could effortlessly infiltrate human society. Unbeknownst to the people of Diamond City, the Institute had somehow evolved their androids into true synthetic humans. Since. After he shot Henry, that Mr. Carter shot three or four other people too. Like I said, all hell broke loose. The guards came running, they opened fire, and Mr. Carter, he kept shooting, and throwing people around left and right. Finally, those guards put him down. It seemed like they had killed a man who had flipped his lid. Gone crazy, and he lay there like a dead crazy man, sure enough. God, it was horrible. But then we saw the plastic and the metal. This was one of them early since, you see. And we realized it wasn't a man at all. It was then we all knew. The Institute wasn't just out there. The Institute was everywhere now. Among us. It was never determined precisely why the synth known as Mr. Carter went on his killing spree. Some suggested he had somehow been remotely controlled by the Institute, who wanted to test his combat effectiveness. Still others felt he had simply malfunctioned. A hypothesis supported by the twitching cheek, and was never meant to kill anyone. But at that time, the why hardly seemed important. What mattered was that the humans of the Commonwealth had been truly infiltrated by an organization whose intentions and motives were, and still are, 
a complete mystery, using a model of synth even less advanced than the ones the Institute has in service today. Which brings us to noodles. Specifically, the noodles consumed by Mayor McDonough last Wednesday night, in the same spot that Mr. Carter, the synth, went haywire and mercilessly killed several people. After spending hours sharing an experience the people of Diamond City assumed was reserved for members of the human race, they were wrong. Are we? Well, some spelling mistakes aside, that was an interesting article. What do you think, Dogmeat? Hey. You won't believe what's in the next Wait issue. there. Just you wait. Come on. Hey, Nat. Watch your back. Institute could be right behind you. <gasps> nah, they're not there. What about now? Nah, they're still not there. This place is so cool looking, oh my god, so many people to talk to, so many places to visit, and there's power noodles right over there. Hey, Scaver, got plenty of ramen meat on the hooks. Mmm. Wait, what kind of meat is this? You never heard of ramen? Big, dumb, got four legs and two heads? They're the only cattle around. Everything's fresh from the Codman family farms. Sometimes, we get weird stuff from the caravans, too. Weird stuff? Weirder than two-headed cow meat? Yeah, princess. Weirder than that. Mirelurk, bloatflies, rad stags. It's all protein, right? Ain't like you can be picky in the Commonwealth. Hey, I won't judge. I've... you name it, I've eaten it. Let's see what you have. Brahmin's fresh. Everything else, you're on your own. No reason to buy any of it, though. I've got more than enough baked stuff. I think I've even got some baked stuff that I stored in the workshop. Everyone who's anyone who's Anyone is crisis. one of those things. It's that secretary of his. Her and her perfect. Hair. Mm hmm. The mayor's secretary. Come on, Ma. I cut her hair myself, and I know human hair. That's just it, Johnny. You wouldn't be able to tell the difference. If you nicked McDonough with your razor, he'd bleed. Don't mean nothing. Hmm. Around here, we call your haircut the Scav Special. Little flecks of blood, give it the personal touch. You should think about getting a trim. I'm good. What are my options? You name it. Shaves, long cuts, short cuts, braids, layering. Eh, be easier just to show you. Got an empty chair right here. Not today. Later then. Hey, who wants to look beautiful? Hairstyles from across the Commonwealth. <clears throat> you there, talk some sense into my net with son. McDonough's secretary, is she a synth? I haven't even met her. Oh yeah, she's totally a synth. Oh my god, if I do that, who knows, they might end up trying to murder her or something. No idea. You don't know? What? Born without a brain between your ears? You just said no one could tell the difference, Ma. She don't know if Geneva's a synth, and neither do you. So could you lay off? Don't you talk to your mother that way, Johnny. Snip, snip, and bam, you're beautiful. Not interested. Okay, you take care. That a real vault suit? Damn. Yeah, yeah it is. Pristine. Swatter, swatter, who needs a swatter? Money, she must go. Do yourself a favor. Oh and just my say god. This. It's all he understands. Uh. E Yes. Yes. <laughs> Just sells noodles. That's it. Takahashi. Don't be caught dead. <laughs> Protection from Commonwealth weaponry. You are a protectron that has been programmed to do nothing but cook noodles, aren't you? 
Takahashi. What are you saying? Tell me a joke. <laughs> no. Don't let the stress of life kill you. Relax with some cams. Got too much dirt Doctor. In your hair? A new patient. You won't regret a new file to open. Do you have a legitimate medical concern? Or is this about our facial reconstructive services? Your what? Facial reconstruction? What's that? Uh, it's Doc Crocker's specialty. If you're interested, talk to him about it. Just head through the door with our logo on it. Now, if you have an actual medical problem, speak up. So what kind of treatments are common around here? Bandaging wounds and cleaning radiation exposure are the most common things you outsiders usually ask for. That and kicking a chem habit. Not right now. Very well. Dr. Sun, Doc Crocker referred to... Ah, so this is where I should be able to change the makeup on my face, right? Procedures, whatever that means. Is this it? <clears throat> Prescriptions filled right here. Anything you need. You seem shady. Mana, I keep telling you I'm human. No, sure. You might think looking for a job. If you've got one. Yeah, I got something. Looking for a mutated fern if you find any. I hear some grows out near Forest Grove Marsh. Natural radiation sucker. Be great for cooking rad X or rad away. Sweeten the deal with some money, and I might be interested. All right. How about 125 caps? <laughs> I'm going to take my chances. Let's see if we can talk him up even more. Come on. Make it worth my while, Solomon. You are one righteous yeah. talker. 150 caps. I could even talk him up more, but the chance of me succeeding is really low. That's right. Just relax. Chill out. Actually, I think I have something already. Well, all right. Here's your payment. This plant's gonna be great to cook with. Mutated fern flower removed. Wait, when did I get a mutated fern flower? I don't even remember getting that. So, wait, where is this facial reconstruction thing? I think I got a quest for it. It is... over here? Can't believe you eat that food. Only one thing worth buying in the dugout inn, and that's the booze. Yeah, it's gotta eat. What can I say? A real Diamond City boy eats at the noodle stand. You can't be a citizen in until you eat the Takahashi's noodles? Shadows. Chill out is what I say. I hear there's a bar in the old theater district that's for raiders only. The combat zone. I Stay hear clear there's a bar in the old theater district Oh my god. That's for Everybody please only. stop. Stop the talking to me. Stop. Calm, calm down. Holly, calm down. Get lost. lost. Donut Inn. Vadim, I need to talk. Just a minute, Yefim. I am in middle of story. So then, I am crossing river, right? Wearing nothing but a smile. When the out comes, the, the most dangerous of all sea monsters. What's with you, Vault? A Meyer Lurk! A Meyer Lurk! Come on. That's like two out of ten points of danger tops. Now, if you want to talk something really deadly. Vadim! Oh, I forgot you were there, Yefim. What is it? You know what? Never mind. I'll handle it myself. Ever seen a Meyer lurk? Think a crab, cross with a tank, with a bag. See this bar? I killed a man for it. <laughs> no, no. I kid, I kid. <laughs> he is dead, though. <laughs> now, let me know when you're ready to order. You know, I call this place the Donut Inn, I think. 
I think that's what I said. It's actually the Dugout Inn, but I don't care. I think Donut Inn is just way better. So, this your bar? Damn straight it is. My brother Yefim and I make the best moonshine in the entire Commonwealth. We call it Bobrov's Best. Had to start renting out rooms just so customers had a place to safely pass out after drinking it. <laughs> Not today. Ah, come on. Hey. Newcomer, huh? Newcomer, huh? Talk to Abbott at the Talk wall. Talk to Abbott if you want at the wall if you want a history lesson. What? Two people just told me to do the same thing at the same time. This is creeping me out. You have marvelous bone structure. Stop by the mega surgery sometime. Oh, you are the mega surgeon guy. Hey, Doc. Mayor and his Even though I'm a doctor, I admit I have a wall. small vice. A, a quick hey, drink after work. I'd rather work. be on this side of the wall than the other side. You know? Okay, so I've got to visit him when he's actually at his place of work. Right now, he's just hanging out here. Good to see returning customers. <laughs> Most die. Uh, you let me know if you need a drink. Uh, no thanks. Not interested. Come back later, <laughs> sir. <laughs> He's just floating there in midair during the cutscene. Okay, I've had my fun. Oh, a customer. Need a room? What's the story with this place? Not much to say. We sell food, drink, and rooms. Mainly for traders that come to the area. My brother Vadim runs the bar. Scarlet's our waitress, and she helps me keep the rooms clean. As much as they can be. I don't think so. Fine. But no sleeping on the couch. God, this place is a shithole. Ah, yes. Miss? Hi there. You can order drinks and food here or at the bar. I like your sense of style. Looks really cool. Who owns this bar, anyway? The Bobrov brothers picked this place up a few years ago. Uh, Vadim Bobrov is the loud one, Yefim Bobrov is the quiet one, and I'm the one that has to listen to them argue with each other all day. Not looking to buy right now. Ah, uh, fine, fine. You read the paper? Damn sense. Hiding among us. Hi. Don't bother, pal. I ain't seen nothing, I ain't heard nothing. I kind of want to read their terminal. Hey, dog meat. Heads up. Come here, boy. Come here. Over here. Move here. Come here. Stay. Hold position. <clears throat> no one saw me. No one saw me. not your enemy. They are victims in this war as well. True, they were created by the Institute, but they were created as slaves. Thinking, feeling, and dreaming beings, utterly oppressed by their tyrannical masters. So join with us in fighting the real enemy, the Institute. Join the railroad. When you're ready for that next step, don't worry. We'll find you. I mean, they are synths, I, they are machines, so yeah, like, I don't, I don't blame the synths themselves, I guess. Just the people that programmed them, that made them so. Hmm. 
Okay, I'm not going to steal any of that stuff, but I want information. That's it. There we go. To Vadim, please clean up. Please at least do your part of the cleaning and keep the bar tidy. Scarlet already cleans half the rooms, the tables, and the patio. I do the rest. May I remind you that I am not your mother, yes? Please lower voices at night. We are running a hotel, yes. People pay to sleep here. Is closing the bar at the same time every night not possible? Sometimes guests still hear you laughing with bar customers well into the early morning. You are anything but quiet. At least keep it down if you insist on serving drinks at all hours. Please pay your bills. <laughs> I do not mind paying bills for our business, but I am not your accountant. Every time you go shopping, you tell merchant to bill the donut. Then I have to pay them off, or we both lose everything. We are in this together, yes? Then why am I the only one who keeps personal finance from professional finance? Oh, poor guy. Read these notes. <laughs> A note to read these notes. I try to talk, you brush me off. You say, put what I want on the terminal, and you will get to it. But then you never read what I write. Can you not understand how maddening that is? You will not even be reading this, will you? Father was right. Heavy is the back that carries two loads. Well, it didn't exactly unearth any juicy gossip that we can use to blackmail somebody or something. But we did learn you want, that Vadim here is apparently come, come, a bit of a jackass. Have a drink. I didn't buy bar to sell water. Nice pip boy. Okay, anyone else in here to talk to? Hmm, it's locked. I'm kind of curious. No, no one's gonna see. I'm really curious what's in here. Got it. I don't intend to steal anything, I just wonder if there's any dirt I can gather up. Nope, just some things to steal. Okay. Oh, hello again. You don't even need to pay money to get into these places. Just walk right in. Okay, nothing of interest in here. <gasps> oh, 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 oh! It's so beautiful. It's so beautiful. How long has that been in there? Probably been in there for 60 years. It's probably not even edible anymore. It must be plastic. Don't worry. You're safe from the sins here in Diamond City. Alright, so we've got a ton of quests to talk to people already. Don't move, Sid. Whoa. What have you done with the real Riley? Where's my brother? I swear, I'm not a sin. Don't shoot, for God's sake. Oh my God, come family. on, you jackass. Put the gun down Synth now. paranoia. He's a sin. He'll kill us all. Mm. Kyle, no! Okay, show's over. There are no sins in Diamond City. Hear me? Just you folks and your damn paranoia. Holy shit. Thought I was going to have a chance to talk him out of it or something, but I guess not. Hey. He pulled a gun on me. My own brother. What happened? I'm, I'm not a synth. I, I told him. I, I kept telling him. Why didn't he listen to me? I, uh... I need a minute. I need you to step away, Scabber. He's trying to keep me from gathering information. They really want to keep this synth thing on the hush-hush. They don't like people talking about it. 
I understand, officer. I just want to know what happened. What, you didn't hear the shouting? Guy pulls a gun on his own brother, thinking he's a synth. It's that newspaper's fault. Got people all riled up, thinking their own family might be replaced by machines. Look, I'm sorry you got caught up in all this, but it's over, okay? Just go about your business like nothing happened. Better that way. What's everyone still standing around for? Go back to your own damn business! Excuse me. My god. Kyle. Guess that's the end of that. Hey Takahashi. <laughs> Tell me a joke. Let's go see the detective. I'm not sure which of these quest markers is the detective. It's one of these two. I ain't Does a friend scammer. Oh, here we go. Right? Oh my god, that looks delightfully cheesy. That's a fairy tale, man. They don't exist. I heard from my cup. Told you your luck wouldn't last forever. His ties. Oh, Nick. Something wrong? Another stray coming in from the rain. Afraid you're too late. Office is closed. I know you must be busy, but I won't take much of your time, miss. It's important. You're right. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to be rude, but it's just... The detective... He's gone missing. Don't worry. I can help. Tell me what happened. <sighs> Nick was working a case. Skinny Malone's gang had kidnapped a young woman, and he tracked them down to their hideout in Park Street Station. There's an old vault down there that they use as a base. Mm. I told Nick he was walking into a trap, but he just smiled and walked out the door like he always does. Old vaults are always interesting to explore. Who's this Skinny Malone character. I don't know much about him, but he's from Good Neighbor, and that means he's in the well-pressed suits and machine gun school of thuggery. You said Malone's from Good Neighbor? Yeah, it's a tough neighborhood. Northeast a ways. People with power there care about two things. Style and body count. Hey, I'd love to help, but there's the small matter of expenses. Money, huh. I do have 125 caps in the old rainy day fund. I'll find him. You have my word. Thank you. Nick should be easy to spot. He's always wearing that old hat and trench coat get up. Please hurry. What's up here? So many quests to do now. Hmm. Two beds for some reason. A bed up there and a bed down here. This one looks like the real bed, though. This one looks like it's just being stored next to the stairs. I want to make sure I collect all the quests from within Diamond City before I leave it, though. Uh, I'm stuck. <laughs> Somebody help! Oh, there we go. There's a kitty cat up there. Kitty cat! Hold on, I'm coming cat! I'm coming! I'm coming! I think they just reused the model for... What was the cat's name from Vault, uh... Vault 81? Was it Ashes? It's probably the same hideous robo-kitty. You know, that's the story the paper should be writing about. Those are the real sins. The cats.
There you are. It is the same cat. Nyah. Exactly. Yep, that's the exact same Robo Kitty. Look at it turn. Oh my god, look at that animation. It's so terrible. <gasps> oh, you poor thing. It's every moment of life is probably suffering. Shopping at night? Diamond City surplus is always open. I don't think I'm supposed to be up here. I don't think I'm supposed to be here either, because now I'm like stuck in the wall. Let's stop jumping on roofs because that seems very dangerous. Doc Crocker. Oh, my marker tells me to go to him no matter where he is, even if he's inside of his locked home. Hey, I think those Bobra brothers are looking for you. Bobra brothers, there's another quest. Quest after quest after quest. Okay, well, you know what? People are going to sleep. It gets harder to talk to them. Let's rent a room and sleep for the night. Oh, here we go. Try it, Yiffy. All right, you. Tell me. Diamond City Radio is terrible, yes? Makes you want to cut your own ears off. I've never even listened to it. So, what's the issue? Have you not listened? This DJ Travis, he's terrible. Makes me want to go back in time and prevent radio from ever being invented. <laughs> Damn. It's true. Don't listen to my brother. Someone needs to get rid of him. We need a new DJ for the radio. I don't think many would notice if he, you know, disappeared. He hates him so much, this radio guy that he wants him killed, really? I guess that'd be one way to handle it. It would be quick, and probably mostly painless. You just first leak him out of town. All right, that's enough. Vadim isn't serious. He doesn't really want to kill Travis. He seemed pretty serious to me. No, no, no. He, he was only kidding, right, Vadim? <laughs> it, it's true. Only jokes. Travis is a good friend. Yefim and I worry about him. Poor well, Travis, he, he means well, but he does not have the confidence he needs for that job, or anything else, really. And so he's always awkward. He does not believe in himself, you see? He expects he will fail at everything, and so he does. So, are you actually trying to do something about it? I tell you, themes that I have plan. He does not believe me. You, you and I work on plan. Go on, spoil sport. Go back to working. We will figure out how to help Travis. Come, you. Meet me in back room. We discuss plan. So many quests. I love it. Beat it. What? I love it when there's a, like a super them. dense place like this. Like a little microcosm that just is full of quests. Okay, let us get down to brass tacks. I am glad you are willing to help. Unlike my deadbeat brother, Travis is a good guy. He deserves better life. So, what did you have in mind? I'm gonna need some more in the way of details. Ever been in bar fight? What does that have to do with anything? I ask because I want you to help Travis win his first bar fight. Think you can do that? I want to stage fight here in dugout. Nothing too serious. Uh, we make sure Travis wins and feels good about himself after. I want you to be there to help make it look real. What do you think? Sound good to you? Uh... How would something like that even work? It makes sense, I promise. I have contacts, people I can count on. Real tough looking, but they will take a die for money. They confront Travis here at dugout. You step in and give him push he needs to stand up to them. 
then you and Travis take them down. Nothing gets too rough, and Travis is something he can feel good about. Simple, right? Why involve me in this? You have seen Travis, yes? <laughs> he cannot fight alone, not even fake one. He needs help. You can help him. I have everything ready by six o'clock. Travis should be here by then. You show up and it will go well. Promise. Okay. Yeah, let's do it. Oh, dog meat. Patient patriotic dog. Heads up. Moving out. Drinks! The fine Okay, let's rent a room. <laughs> Why'd you just stop talking? Let's rent a I'll room. I'll take your order whenever you're ready. Mm, I get a room from you, don't I? Hey, Vadim. No, wait. I get a room from... Got a reason for bothering me? Uh... Yeah, we'll Need a room? Yeah. Fine. Here's your caps. You're in room two, just through the door. Hey, here. Okay, wait till after six. Let's do it. Hawthorne. Drinks! If that article in the public is right, then McDonough... What if he is? Hey, hey, I'm hey Hawthorne. Hey. Look, we're safe What's your on this side of the wall. Mercenary, caravan guard. What? What? What's this about? I don't oh, like you, and I don't like your Show radio. Done. What you gonna do about it? You tell him. Hey I don't there, like pal. you, oh, and I don't like you. your radio. What you gonna do about it? Everything okay here? Does it look okay? Because, no, it is not. I don't, I have no idea what I did to deserve this. I just wish they'd go away. Oh God, this guy sounds sympathetic. I feel bad for him. All right, let's do this. How about this? Why not stand up to him? No, I mean, no, that would be bad. With these men, it could, well, it, it, it could turn violent. Nothing will change unless you make it happen. It's not that bad. I can just, I can just, I can just deal with this. Don't worry. I've got your back. Well, if you think it would work... Uh, okay, that's... Well, that's enough. Oh, I'm sorry. You say something. I said... I said that's enough. Leave me alone. <laughs> Look at you. Hmm, let me think about that for a second. Hmm, nah, I don't think so. I... I mean it. Leave me alone! Well, sounds like you were thinking about saying, or else. <laughs> were you, Travis? Were you gonna say, or else? I'm wondering what comes after that. What you gonna do, little man? I'll... I'll beat you up! Big mistake, Travis. I'm gonna destroy you, and your friend here. I don't know if this is funny or pathetic. So, uh, yeah, how about God, that? My jaw. Bullshit, man. Just bullshit. This is bullshit, man. This is not what I signed up for. This ain't over. You hear me? <laughs> what? 
<laughs> what are you doing? Did you want to leave or? There, there. Oh, dog meat's blocking the way. Good job, dog meat. Beat it, lady. Oh, uh, um. Hi. There. That was so awkward. Travis. Whoa. I, I can't believe it. We did it. I knew you had it in you. I can't. I can't believe it. You were right. Oh. I've. I've got things to do now. Listen, really, I, I can't thank you enough. Look at all that blood. I don't know if that's really a good thing we just did. I mean, it's helped his confidence, sure, but getting into a fight and punching people... It's like, yeah, if you feel pathetic, you should punch people. I don't think that's a good idea. Hmm. I want that skirt, it looks so cool. Alright, Vadim, where are you? Oh, there's Vadim. He is over in his room. Or, oh no, he's in the back room. <laughs> I think that went well! <laughs> Ready for next part of foolproof plan? There's more? The last part wasn't so foolproof. You are alive, Travis is alive, everything is fine. And next part is simple. You have seen Scarlet, yes? She has worked here for some time. Now, I am just simple bartender, but I see things. I see how Travis looks at her. And I see that sometimes she looks at him. If someone who was not her employer suggests that she go spend time with Travis, it might do him some good. Okay, I, I, I'm getting less and less comfortable with meddling with people's relationships like this. I don't really want to manipulate her into that. Mm. You? Shy? <laughs> Fuck that! <laughs> I'm not here to play Cupid. So negative! It's just one little conversation. You are giving slight push, that's all. Just do whatever it takes to get her to agree to see Travis, and this will all be worth it. And you and I never talked about this, all right? First he says just a little push, and then he says do whatever it takes. Uh, I don't think so. We'll you see about that. Marvelous bone structure. Regardless, we can't do anything about it now, because Scarlet already left. It's after 6pm, so I'm guessing she went home to sleep. You need a haircut. Alright, well, I think this is a pretty good place to end this episode. It feels kind of unsatisfying, because I didn't really solve any quests. But we did go to Diamond City, and start to get a little bit of a feel for this place. And I have gathered up quite the list of quests to do. So I hope you've enjoyed so far. And when I return, I'm going to start doing them. <laughs>